forges an ever tighter ring of air defense. With radar scanners probing the skies 24 hours a day, anti-aircraft men scramble to man the batteries of guided missiles that guard all important cities, in this case, Chicago. Nike, America's most powerful aircraft destroyer, is ready for action in a matter of minutes. Nike, whose true performance is a carefully guarded secret, tracks down its target at supersonic speeds, hurling its half-ton warhead squarely into any enemy bomber. Ready for their lethal mission. But Nike needs warning for its work. And 100 miles off the east coast, far out on the defense perimeter, rises a radar tower from the ocean floor, known as Texas Towers, because of their similarity to ocean oil drilling rigs. Defense Department pictures show for the first time the platform 60 feet above the surface of the ocean, which will house the most advanced type of radar detectors and their crews of 30. The piling goes down 100 feet and is anchored in the bedrock of the ocean floor and is capable of withstanding any foreseeable Atlantic storm. Supply ships will keep this sea frontier manned and ready to spot anything that flies. More violence in South Korea. Again, United States troops stand off allies to protect communists, the Czech and Polish members of the Neutral Nation Supervisory Commission. Although the United States agrees with the Korean charge that red members of the Truce Commission are little more than spies, and that the Commission has ignored a military buildup north of the 38th parallel, American troops stand firm in support of the Pledge of Safety granted the Armistice Commission. As in earlier riots, tear gas drives off the mob with few casualties. But there's little hope that Korea and President Syngman Rhee will ease up on efforts to drive out the truce inspectors. Inflamed by Portugal's refusal to evacuate its 400-year-old colony of Goa, 5,000 unarmed Indians march on the enclave in a peaceful invasion attempt. Aroused by Pandit Nero's announced intention of ousting the Portuguese, the demonstrators advance on the border in a living wall of humanity, shouting their defiance. In the first of a series of attempts, the Indians are chosen from volunteers in the passive resistance campaign, undertaken since the Portuguese embassy at New Delhi was ordered closed. Met by gunfire from border guards, they momentarily break ranks and retreat. Resorting to the tactics of passive resistance taught by the late Mahatma Gandhi, they again creep forward. At the frontier, guards watch every move of the would-be invaders and sporadic gunfire into the crowd follows. When the attempt is over, 22 are dead, 120 wounded in a struggle which intensifies daily in bitterness and bloodshed. High-flying helicopter school in Briançon, Europe's highest city. French helicopter pilots train for mountain rescue work in the French Alps. The takeoff point is nearly a mile above sea level, and it's all uphill from there. Some of the continent's most majestic scenery below from a new vantage point. Mountain flying in a helicopter calls for special skills. Erratic air currents and treacherous downdrafts make it ticklish work. But the value of the helicopter for rescue tasks is apparent. At the destination, and it is cold, a lot colder than down below. No wonder, this peak is 12,000 feet. A good day's climb on foot, but only a few minutes by helicopter to the lofty plateau. It only remains to plant a stake as evidence the flight was completed and then back to school. Tomorrow, another day, another mountain. C'est la vie. A little boy and his dog share the spotlight in Chicago, where the latter receives a medal as the most heroic dog of the year. Navy Captain John Harper does the honors, and there are further accolades for Taffy, a cocker spaniel with a heart full of courage. He saved the life of his little master, three-year-old Stevie Wilson of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Taffy raced home for help when Stevie fell through the ice. Unsuccessful the first time, Taffy returned to the lake, leaped into the water. Her efforts fruitless, she rushed home a second time, and help came. A fella's best friend, his dog. <laughs>